it's time to break the ice on 2024. And unfortunately, I do mean that literally, as this has been the coldest January so far since I started making YouTube videos consistently in 2019. We finished 2023 with a total of 181 species observed in the wild, which is not bad considering we didn't try to inflate that number intentionally and we never visited any tropical destinations with super high diversity. The goal for 2024 is to increase that number above 200, hopefully I'd like to see 200 species in 2024, and among those 200 species I hope to at least add a few that I have not seen within the state of Georgia, especially the last 5 species of snake that I need to see in the state. These are the Florida Green Water Snake, the Florida Crown Snake, the Black Swamp Snake, the Striped Crayfish Snake, and my absolute white whale, the Northern Pine Snake. Beyond Georgia, I intend to visit new states in 2024 and find new species that we have not yet seen on the channel in those places. I would also love to continue our international herping and visit at least one international destination in 2024, hopefully more. But that's enough rambling for now. Let's get into our first outings of 2024 and the animals we got to see. Good morning, everybody. Today is the first day of 2024 that is actually tolerable outside, and that is a really painful thing to say considering we're like halfway through January at this point. It has been cold. It doesn't show any signs of improving anytime soon either. So we're actually going to take advantage of what is a really beautiful sunny and 60 degree day and try to at least find some herbs to get on the board for the year. Uh, we've been out a couple of times already, but it's just been so cold. What is that? Is that a thrush? There's a hermit thrush right there. It's the wrong kind of thrush. It's not what you want to see. That's how you know it's winter still. Anyways, let's see if I can get a little, there's that hermit thrush. Hey, where are the salamanders at? What about the snakes? You know where the snakes are? I don't think this guy knows where anything is. All right, guys, first find of the day goes to this little guy. This is a larval spring salamander, actually a pretty cool find. My first spring of any kind in this county which is always a cool find. But look at that guy. These are really cool looking in their larval stage. They actually get pretty big in this larval stage, almost adult size before they metamorph. As you can see, just a really cool looking salamander. He's about the length of my finger, maybe a little bit longer with his tail fully extended. All right, there's a tiny little larval salamander right here next to the spring salamander. This is what these guys eat. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't gobbled that one up. little dusky of some kind. All right, next flip's a pretty good one. We have two three-line salamanders. Not a rare species, but I think this is the first time I've seen them at this spot and in this county, so I'll consider that a W. Get a quick photo and we'll cover these two back up. And here is our first red salamander of the new year. Always something I'm excited to see. It'd be really nice to see an adult spring today, but if we can't make that happen, I will settle with some reds. It's the most colorful herp I've seen all year. Just flipped another upside down guy. Look at him. I believe that is our first American toad of the new year. Actually, no, it's the second one. I forgot. We did cruise one the other night. It's one of the only amphibians we saw in a really cold rain. Yeah, these guys are gonna be breeding very soon. Maybe even tomorrow if we get the forecasted rain and it actually comes in after dark. Very cute. It's kind of gnarly. Caitlin just spotted this guy basking while dead. Every once in a while we see a snake basking while dead, but to see a possum basking while dead, that's next level stuff. That's how you know the weather has been bad lately, is the possums are dying. That's how rough it is. So in the history of making videos on this channel, we have never had a year that started out so cold that we couldn't find any snakes in the first two weeks of the season. So we're definitely in groundbreaking territory in 2024 so far. There's an old car seat to flip. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. There's a bunch of harvester ants though. Well, after seeing no plethodon all day, we just flipped a log that had three little slimies under it. Nothing right home about, but I think this is our first slimies of 2024. And there's an adult slimy. This area is suddenly loaded with them. Look. What you got? <laughs> a 
slimy tail sticking out of the log. That is a huge three-line salamander. Look at this guy. Very nice. These guys are definitely kind of underappreciated. That is a beautiful salamander and really long too. I mean, that's almost as long as like a full-grown spotted. You can definitely tell that we got three inches of rain the other night. All of these vernal pools are absolutely filled to the brim. Kind of surprised it took this long to find any ambistomids, but there's our first marbled. I think that's the only species I've seen at this particular park. So it would be cool to get a spotted or potentially one of the unthinkable ambistomids today. Really spotted and marbled are all we expect to ever find in North Georgia, but there are tigers and uh, mole salamanders too, but they're very, very localized. I've seen a couple of these, but I think it's the first I've shown. Nice little southern two-line. Sure to be very common over the next few weeks. All right, Caitlin just flipped this kind of sad little dude. That is our first spotted salamander of the year. All right, little guy, here you go. We're gonna be seeing plenty more of these in their adult form soon, hopefully with tails. This is a pretty big moment. Our first reptile of 24, spotted by Caitlin. I did actually flip a sleeping anole, but this is the first one we've actually seen out on the surface. First reptile on the surface in 2024. It's about 60 degrees right now, so it's feeling pretty good. Problem is we still have super short days, so we don't have much time to work with while the temperature is nice and warm. All right, well, we just walked the edge of this field because it was in the sun, kind of hoping to see some reptiles. Nothing out, but we're most of the way back to the car at this point, and right here, I just flipped two four-toed salamanders. All of that time in fantastic salamander habitat that's gotten a lot of rain recently. And we come up here into the uplands on the way back to the car and find what I would have expected to see down there by the water. These guys are going to be entering their breeding season very soon, so it's kind of weird to see them up here this high. I think these are both... Oh, it looks like a boy. They might just be boys. Look at that belly, though. That is so cool. All right, pull these guys out briefly to get a look at them. But we're going to put them right back and probably call it a day. They are actually both males, I believe, so... They might be getting ready to disperse towards the breeding ponds. Very interesting to see though. Really was not expecting to find those two on this edge of a sunny field. Not classic salamander habitat. All right guys, that's gonna be it for today. Nothing crazy going on, but we gotta start somewhere. Uh, we do have the rest of the weekend to herp and the weather is gonna be relatively decent, I think. Not as good as today, but decent enough. And we're just going to hit it hard and hope that something turns up. So I'm going to call it a day here and I will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully we're going to get some good warm rain tomorrow. Whether or not that means amphibian breeding, I don't know. All right, everybody. It looks like we're finally catching a little bit of a break in 2024 in the form of this big rainstorm that came through. We've had a ton of rain and it is incredibly warm right now, like 60 something degrees. Unfortunately, it did rain all day, so we didn't get a chance to look for snakes, but there is a chance that there's going to be some really good amphibian activity tonight. So I'm going to head out, get a bite to eat, and probably spend the next couple of hours driving around, checking up on various amphibian spots. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All right, here's one more look at this guy on a nice contrasty grassy background, but... Oh, he's actually jumping around. That's not something we get to see wood frogs do very much. They kind of play dead a lot of the time when you get anywhere near them, at least from my experience, my limited experience. All right, well, despite the fact that we did already find a wood frog on the road, the woods themselves are pretty quiet right now. So I'm going to walk out here to one of these vernal pools and see if there's anything happening in the pond. I'm assuming there will be something happening, but... It's very weird that there's no peepers or chorus frogs calling out here right now because it's like 60 degrees. You know, when I'm walking around in the woods at night and it's very loud and there's lots of frogs calling, it's never very creepy, but this is kind of creepy. So I have no idea why there's no frogs calling right now. This is just super weird. However, there are wood frogs in this pond right now, and I'm looking at one right here. Look at that. He was actually floating on the surface when I walked up, and he kind of dipped down underwater as I approached, but not even calling, just, just sitting in the water. All right, let's grab this guy.
That is such a cool and beautiful frog. I never get tired of them. So pretty. This one's not particularly vibrant, but I just love how well they camouflage with the leaf litter. I mean, that thing was almost impossible to see on the bottom of this pool. And had I not seen him actually go underwater when I walked up, I would have had no idea he was even there. I'm not alone in these woods, as it would turn out. Hello, brother. <laughs> he, uh, he seems to be aware of my presence. Oh, there's holes right here. What's up, dude? <laughs> he seems to be pretty chill for an armadillo. Normally they freak out and go down their hole. All right, I'm doing a little bit of road walking while we wait for Daniel, who's gonna come look at wood frogs. And uh, here we have our first upland chorus frog of the night. I really cannot believe these things are not calling right now. It seems like it'd be such a perfect night for explosive breeding to begin, but maybe they know that polar vortex is coming in behind the storm and it's about to get really cold. Some really creepy noises happening over here. Look at this. Super flooded. Oh, it's an owl. <laughs> that has got to be one of the creepiest looking scenes I have come across. Just dead silent forest in the middle of the night, flooded. Look at that. We got so much rain, the water's up so high. You can't see it very well. Really neat though. It's very eerie out here. What is this thing doing? It's January and there's not even anything calling. And there's a very nice looking green tree frog right here. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Very common, but very beautiful frogs. Always excited to see them. We'll get them out of the road. So I'm walking over here to let this tree frog go on the other side of the road. And I just shined a wood frog in habitat. How cool is that? And there's our tree frog we just moved. Lots of frogs out tonight, despite the uh, eerie silence in the air. It's always fun walking around in these really rural areas like this at night by myself because I feel like I'm playing the same game with everybody that drives past me that they play with me. They're like, is this guy okay? Or is he being weird? Why is he walking around? Should I stop and ask him if he's okay? Or is he being weird? And I'm, I feel the same way about these people. I think are these people just curious if I'm okay? Or are they being weird driving back and forth past me? Either way, it's definitely a strange thing to be doing, but at the same time, you would think people would just stop and actually ask me if I'm okay, if they were genuinely concerned that I might be, uh, you know, broke down or something, and that's why I'm out here. But just my thoughts as I walk around in the middle of nowhere with a guy driving back and forth past me over and over again. And since I know people are wondering, there is a reason that I'm not particularly concerned about what he's going to do. And I'm sure plenty of you that are watching know what I mean. And those who don't, <laughs> well, I don't know how to help you because you can't be doing this kind of stuff without means of self-defense because there are a bunch of weirdos out there. I was just bragging to Daniel about how pretty the wood frogs here are. And right after that, I turned up that he is kind of cool looking he's just he's almost solid black that's a really odd looking wood frog i've seen some kind of brownish ones before but this one is he's almost kind of like blacky blue it's a very weird looking frog i can't believe how small these wood frogs here are i was daniel was kind of surprised by that too but i was expecting them to be more like leopard frog size and they're closer to chorus frog size I think I've mentioned that on the channel before. Um, but if you guys live where wood frogs are more common than here, do you see them bigger than this, or is this pretty normal sized? I really don't know. All right, I just pulled this guy out of a vernal pool. This is a little southern leopard frog. Who uh, These guys actually do sound very similar to wood frogs when they're calling, and we thought we might have heard a wood frog earlier, but I'm starting to wonder if it was just one of these guys. 
but they're both swimming around in ponds right now. We've seen wood frogs swimming and leopard frogs swimming tonight, so there's a blister beetle. I forget what species this is, but they're super weird looking, very disproportionate. They've got that huge abdomen and a little tiny head. I always see them out in the rain like this. Well, these guys can actually squirt acid out of their, their buttocks and give you a bad time. So we're not going to touch that guy, but it is a really cool looking insect. Almost looks like a giant ant. All right, we're shining around a vernal pool and there's a chorus frog. Very coldly swimming around right here. Still trying to find a wood frog in habitat that Daniel can actually see in situ. But there just isn't a ton of activity. And what activity there is seems to be kind of limited. And that was it. There didn't appear to be any breeding activity happening. I think probably because this polar vortex was coming in behind that nice warm rain. So the amphibians knew that the water could potentially freeze if they laid their eggs. But thankfully there is relief on the way. There is some very spring-like weather in the forecast for next week. And I could not be more excited. So looking forward to getting out and taking advantage of that. Thank you guys so much for watching the first episode of 2024. Hopefully this will be the slowest episode of the year. Hope you guys are staying warm. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.